Danny Crane and welcome back to TIS 100. In my last video we looked at the sequence generator and the sequence counter and today we're going to start off with the signal edge detector. This one has us take a value from the input and see if it's changed by 10 or more from the previous value that we had gotten in. Uh, if it has changed by 10 or more then we output a 1 and if it hasn't we output a 0. Uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use primarily two blocks here. Uh, this first one is going to just see how much the value has changed. Uh, basically we're just going to subtract the new value into the previous value and see what that number is. Uh, this lower block down here, we're going to use this to see if that value has changed by 10 or more. Uh, so the way we're going to start, we're going to start up here by moving the up value to the accumulator and then we're going to send that to the left. Uh, we're going to use this block over here just to take it, send it back to us, and we're going to use that to subtract. Uh, we need to swap now. We're going to use swap to uh, flip-flop the accumulated value and the backup value, and that's how we're going to have our previous value saved when we have the new one come in. So then what we want to do is subtract the left. So that takes our previous value, flop puts it up to the accumulator, and then subtracts what we're going to have coming in from over here, and that'll give us a number. Uh, it will be either positive or negative, uh, because if this value that we sent over here is higher than what we have saved, we'll get a negative number. If it's the other way around, we'll get a positive. We want it to always be positive, so we have to do a check for that. Uh, and we're going to check if uh, it's less than zero, so we're going to jump if less than zero to our low setting where we're going to have it uh, basically take that negative number and make it a positive. If it's not less than zero, it's already a positive then in that case, so all we have to do is move the accumulator down and then jump back to the start. Now if the value is a negative number, uh, we're going to need to make it a positive and the way you do that is with that command right there, NEG. Uh, if you do that when it's positive, it makes it a negative, and if it's a negative, it makes it a positive. And then we can go ahead and move that on, oops, down. And then it'll just jump right back up and start over again. Uh, now, I haven't filled out this one. We can start this one real quick. Uh, we're gonna move the right value that we have coming in to the accumulator, and then we're just gonna move that straight back to the right. So that takes care of that. So now we have our blocks here that will tell us how much the value has changed. Now we need to see if it has changed by 10 or more. Uh, so we're going to start off down here by moving that value up to the accumulator and then we're going to subtract 10. Now um, if the number that comes down is less than 10, then we're going to get a negative number. If it's equal to or greater than 10, we're going to either get 0 or we're going to get a positive number. Um, so we need to check to see if it is less than 0, because that's the only one that's going to give us uh, a, a negative output. It's going to give us a 0 output. Um, so if the number is less than 0, uh, we're going to go down to no, we're going to call it in this one. If the number we get is a zero or a positive number, that means it has changed by 10. So we're going to output a one down, and then we're going to jump back to the start. Now, if the number we get isn't correct, if uh, it's less than zero, we're going to move a zero down and then that's it and we're pretty much done here now we're just going to move the up to the right and then we're going to move the left down so let's go ahead and step through this real quick here uh, the first value we have coming in is a zero it's going to move that over here <clears throat> I hit the wrong button again <laughs> so we get a zero uh, it's going to do all that stuff and we're going to get a zero out of it because it's not comparing it to anything. Uh, now on this one, we get a 25 in. 
it sends it over here it swaps it so now we get that previous value that previous zero and then it's going to subtract that 25 gives us negative 25 that was low so it comes down here makes it a positive and sends it down now we subtract 10 from that we get 15 which means that it has changed by more than 10 it moves one down and it jumps back up and that has us done we are all set I'll let it play through so and this is actually a little bit simpler than the first way I did it uh, I kinda overthought it than my first solution there we go so uh, pretty much average for my solution I, I mean I wasn't expecting very much on that uh, we'll go on back I can show you my previous one here uh, actually had a higher cycle count and a few more extra not needed instructions uh, so that's how I tackled the signal edge to now one quick note on my previous solution uh, after I recorded it I realized I could make it a little bit more simpler I had an extra command in there I didn't need and that was for this one right here uh, all you had to do really is uh, move that right value and send it right back to the right I didn't need to deal with saving it in the accumulator uh, and I'll press play here and let you see it works just as good as it did before uh, but with one less command uh, so just wanted to throw that out there uh, I know there's probably some other optimizations that I'm probably missing, but uh, that was just the quickest one I just realized right now.